Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Showcase on Bloodborne. Another day, another showcase. And today's showcase is brought to you by request. Today's item, the Beast Claw. The Beast Claw is a bit of a funny, uh, funny weapon, really. It's kind of like, I didn't think it would be very good until the DLC came. But anyway, let's talk about description. Beast weapon built by an invert Izzy. Which is, I'm pretty sure, the guy killed in the DLC perhaps, I think. Uh, what, whatever. Crafted by the choosing a long bones of an undead dark beast and fastening them to a weapon. The bones are still alive. When unleashed, grants the builder the spurt of the beastly power. With the flesh splayed and the blood is sprayed, the beast within awakes, and in time, the wielder of his weapon surged with both strength and feverish rivy. Now, visually, the base weapon is, um, I don't know. Would you call this a weapon? I don't know, it looks like a caveman's weapon, if you will. To fasten sharp bones onto some uh, wood or cloth. But it's besides the point. Well, it says the bones are still alive, but I don't know. I don't know, a spooky, spooky skeleton and whatnot. I don't see him moving anymore. <laughs> but terrible jokes aside and dead memes, when you transform the weapon, it gets a little different. It's quite quick and sudden, and within a flash, it happens. Suddenly, your other arm goes all beast-like, and you grow some serious arm hair. So, it's pretty much taking the full form of the werewolf. At least with on your upper left hand. Your right one goes the same amount of hair, but remains the same. So, it begs the question, what really changes? When it comes to this weapon, I'm going to be honest, no, not a whole lot actually changes at all mainly how it's presented and how it acts. But first, let's go on to the stats. Now, going on to the stats for the Beast Claw, you see the damage isn't particularly very high starting off. It's only 75. And despite all my stats being 45, the bonus damage is only 38, which is not bad starting off, but it's not great either. But there's a reason why. It's a good DPS weapon. Although they wish, they wish to give us more numbers in this regard. But regardless, you can see all quick silver bullets and other stats remain usual. And for a true bonus, you got D for strength, E for skill, and D for arcane. 14 strength, 12 skill, and nothing else. Going on to the stats, though, you can see that the all damage is put into thrust, which I guess so. It's not really a blunt weapon, and it's not really a whole lot of slash unless you transform. Going on to animation, the base attack, well, it's more of a quick swipe, if you will, or repeated swipes, which could be seen as thrusting damage, but I don't really think so. Now, going on to the power attack, well, it's actually a little more to the same thing, just heavier, if you will, and repeated motion. And the charge attack is more of an actual like, uppercut, if I say so myself. Okay, in light step pack, you can see a very rapid swipe. The, pack, the power attack version is more of a claw motion, if you will. Light rolling attack isn't the uh, thrust attack, and the heavy rolling attack, well, it's not really different from the normal one, as usual. Alright. There's the plunge attack, and now switching to the actual weapon, there is none. There is a. You see, it just automatically switches normal, so there's no transformation attack. Which is actually rather strange if you come and think about it. Usually there is. Alright. Moving off of that, the base animation here is. You can see it's a lot of the same swiping, but now it's more claws and a lot more furious. It's like really quick and rapid. That's the general idea of this. Power attack is just strictly using that claw as exactly what it is. <laughs> and there is the charging attack. So you're probably thinking at this point, this is a lot similar to the attacks from the base version, and you're probably right. It would seem that the the trick to this weapon is simply it gets quicker. I don't only really say that its damage, damage really changes all that much. You get some animation changes, but it's mainly just quicker. Of course, you lose the ability of your offhand left weapon, but it's a lot better in this single-handed version, or the single version there. You can see a twin version here, like when you use a twin attack, it simply just uses both arms in conjunction. Alright, so otherwise, um, the funny thing about this weapon for me is I find the base version to be very pointless when you have this one. 
where just pretty much the trick version does everything the base one does, just quicker. And you can saw the switch back tack right there. Alright, that would be the end of animations. But we're not done yet, because if you download the DLC, there's an extra layer to this, a much better one. So if you gadget yourself the Beast uh, Brace Ruin, when you put that on, as you probably know, it turns you into just that, one of the beast kin. The white werewolf, if you will. However, things change this weapon, slightly, animation-wise. Now, the base attack is uh, quite more aggressive, just like that of a werewolf. You are more or less all over the place. <laughs> now, the power attack is also changed, as it's now much more uh, aggressive, <laughs> a lot more teeth on it. But however, there is no charge attack. That is a big trade-off, though, for the travel trick version, anyway. Alright, for a light little step back, you see that's a really rapid, wide angle of attack there. That's much different and much more aggressive. Power attack for light will step back, you can see it's very quick. Rolling attack, quick swipes. And of course the rolling power attack is no different from the regular power attack. Alright. And there's the L2 version of now, you got a giant howl. I'm not sure how to affect enemies, maybe it's light damage, maybe it's stun, we'll see. Now something interesting. You got the uh, transformation attack. Which happens at a sudden rate and pull. You got a switch back, which the original actually lacked, as I forgot to mention earlier. Now you can see that the base attacks for the single version is even different. That's also very aggressive. Although, I wouldn't say it's just as fast as the main one as before your Beast Embrace version, but it's mainly just slightly different. Now, there's a big question about this animation change. Is it better? Well, there's a certain set of other rules to go on top of this. That's the reason why this video is almost 20 minutes long. Okay. Now, before we get to there, let's go over the uh, specific reason you would probably choose this. Here's the base version. Without the werewolf, about the beast embrace. There's no upgrades on this weapon yet, so... As you can see, it does accept a lot of damage. It's quick. It's alright. But uh, that's just a plain version. Normally I wouldn't even use this version at all. Alright, and then you switch to the twin version and then the DPS significantly increases, but it's besides the point. Mainly you just get a lot of damage and you can see there, the little beast, the beast uh, is rising inside you. What that does is simply a trade-off. The higher it gets, the more damage you do, but the more damage you take. Now you can see with the beast ball embrace, that automatically is already there. With just in the base version, that's because the beast will embrace. But however, if you switch over to the well, to trick version, the both two-handed, you can see that increases incredibly quick. Both you do the same damage either way, but with the beast embrace, you build up your beast meter quicker. That's double-edged sword though. You do more damage, but you take more damage. As you've seen just a little bit there, I'm already taking a lot more damage than that, which should normally be. So if you're good at dodging, excellent. If you're horrible at dodging. It's abysmally terrible of a choice. <laughs> it all really depends on you, the player. Now, going on upgrade. Uh, basic damp for upgrades, you get a little bit of damage, but that makes sense because it's a mainly DPS weapon. But uh, more importantly, for the purpose of this review and keeping it in oration of time, I'll reviewing only with the, be the Beast Embrace on. Because you get the same result, it's just the Beast Embrace adds the more of the Beast meter to be grown. And that's the more significant part of his weapon. Without it, it's just, you know, a lot less to work with. Not really in terms of less damage, but it's a lot more difficult to review. Or maybe get to the point where you want it. It all depends what you want out of it. But since it'll be the same damage either way, I'd rather get the speed version and get that result to you as quickly as possible. That means only one of them. Now the only thing about upgrading is, if you do add uh, Arcane, Effect, it will transfer entire damage to Arcane, Fire or Bolt of your choosing. Pretty good, so it can do that, which is nice. Going on to the performance of the Beast Claw. Now, uh, the base version is something I'm not actually particularly impressed with. Uh, the range is non-existent, and it's not really quick enough for my liking. For one weapon, anyway. 
Twin version is a little different, but first I want to test that roar, which I uh, was immediately disappointed with when I did test it. Its stagger value is almost non-existent, other than for a brief respite second which offers no opportunity. But the range is good at around 2 meters and more 180 degrees in front of you, which is pretty good. At least I think it's 180 degrees. It works pretty good in that regard. But damage is not that really there, as I mentioned, so I'm not sure the really point of it. It doesn't seem to break through anyone's guard. So, as a single weapon, it's it does the job acceptably. It just makes meets my acceptable line. It's only the twin version where you got significantly more DPS. It's actually worth it, in my opinion. But that's up to you. Where you got the twin version, you can just tear through most opponents incredibly quick. Very quickly. Although, stagger-wise, isn't so a whole lot, so you gotta pick your battles very carefully. Now, it gets to armored enemies. Well, the basic weapon... Eh. Eh. It's okay. Just meets the acceptable requirement yet again. Even with a power attack, isn't that great? But it's only with the twin version that we get something more impressive. Mind you, it's more or less a breeze and brace kicking in to do this. But with the twin, the, twi the twin version, you can tear through an enemy incredibly quickly. Very quickly, actually. So okay, and you have stamina left over when you do so. Mind you, the more you do this, the more your damage gets higher. At this point, these armored enemies don't provide a lot of damage, so. At this point, you're doing a lot more damage. Around maybe 70% more, I think. So, definitely worth in that regard. Because even though they have higher armor values, your damage increases. Well, it's a good trade-off. Against these enemies, though. I guess the uh, Armored Maiden, maybe not. Although I did go into this battle with my Beast uh, Gauge already heightened. <laughs> but even with a heightened, the single version still does pretty significant damage there. Alone, anyway. But, uh... In terms of value, I don't know. I'm very uh, polarized by this weapon. With the Beast Embrace, it's nice. But, I don't know, it's just not my playstyle of the plane like this. It works, but you can see I almost died just by that one hit alone at the full gauge. <laughs> that really hurt. A lot. Now, fighting a Shadow of Yarnum is a bit tricky of a thing, because even though they have no armor, they have much better range than I do. I just simply attack much faster than them, which is a rarity, because they attack very quickly. But the single version, don't really care for it at all. Twin version, all for it. Because again, just get, you get faster than them, and that's the point of it, just to be faster. But I think I got my point across in this performance. Moving on to the pros and cons, and for simplicity's sakes, I'll call this the Beast Nail. Oh no. Seems fitting. Okay, on the pros, it is a fra still rather swift weapon in the arsenal of, you know, hunter's weapons. And then still it can be used with your offhand weapon. And that is it for pros in my opinion. On the cons, it has virtually no range, or very little range. It's better in some weapons, but not very much. And the animation step, spot it's set, leaves a little bit desired. I think most of be wowed by it. Oh, I forgot to mention in pros, it has decent DPS. Okay. Moving on to the score for the Beast Snail. Damage, I'll give a 6 out of 10. It's fairly solid damage, it's just not as great as it can be. Reach is where it heavily falters, I'm going to leave that at 2 out of 10. Very short reach. Animation, I'm going to give a 4 to 10. It's okay, but still a lot of very bland. A lot of the moves were pretty much the same thing. Bonus, I'm going to give a 4 to 10, because this weapon kind of falters on bonus, but it makes it up in DPS. But still a little disappointing in that regard. Miscellaneous, another 4 to 10. For at least the Beast Nail version, I'm just not impressed by this weapon at all in any of the levels. But still, it's better than a lot. Or a bit, I should say. So in total, for the Beast Nail version, which is a single Beast Claw, I give 20 out of 50. It's bad. Mainly on Maid's point levels of disappointing doesn't equal something good. Moving on. Now on to the Beast Claw. For pros and cons, I find this weapon to be a lot more aggressive and unpredictable with its animations. Especially in PvP, that would be a lot more helpful. DPS is better 
than the single version. And with this, either we take the ruin or not, it builds up your beast can very quickly. All right. Cons Weber, the uh, L2 move, I guess base wise would be overall impressive, but beast can or yeah, the beast can version with the ruin is rather disappointing. Take your pick. Pros and cons. On <laughs> which side do you want that on? <laughs> Still, L also has disappointing range. All right. And otherwise, that kind of covers. Oh yes, and you lose your offhand left weapon. Sure, but it goes without saying. Go down to the score for the uh, Beast Claw. Damage, I'll give it 8 out of 10, given it's much wider attack range and much quicker, which I find a lot better to work with. Reach, though, is still pretty abysmal. Not counting the roar, it is a 2 out of 10, still. Animation, I find much better. I'll give that a 6 out of 10. Playing more interesting moves in there, actually making it exciting to use and more unpredictable for your enemy. Bonus remains the same at a 4 to 10, which is a bit of a Achilles heel there. And Miscellaneous, I give a 6 out of 10, as it's much more worth using, but still, in the whole arsenal of weapons, even with the beast, well, Kins and the beast abilities, it still leaves a little bit to be desired in my book. But still, I'll give it, in total, 26 out of 50. It's still a good weapon, at least in my opinion. Okay, here it is with all the blood gems embedded, which you get double or almost double the base damage, which is pretty good. But in terms of DPS weapon, let's see how it does actually in terms of numbers. And there you have it. Pretty good in terms of DPS, though the risk reward is a lot to you. For me, I'd probably opt out of it for more of a reliable base damage that doesn't change. But still, suits some people out there, and no doubt some people are truly are a beast of the weapon. <laughs> but that's my opinion, and that's been Showcase for today. Thank you all for watching. Hope to see you guys next time. Take care out there.